Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. <clears throat> I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle educational website. It's eight self improvement lessons. The seventh of those lessons is focused on how to forge and maintain a successful, functional, high nurturance step family. That is an extraordinarily complicated task. I'm a step everything by life experience. I've studied step families as a specialty for 31 years. And I want to offer part of what I've learned here in this video in case you are interested in step families. The topic I want to focus on here is how do you evaluate among all the well intentioned books and articles and websites and seminars? classes, how do you evaluate effective step family advice? The reason I'm making this video is for my master's thesis, uh, my social work master's thesis, I spent two years full time. I did nothing else, else other than read information about step families. Obsessional? Absolutely. In part that was because I was in a step family and we were in trouble. So I have read well over 40 books, lay and professional. I have read well over 100 articles, Ladies Home Journal, the Journal of Marriage and Family Counseling. I have read a great deal, many, many dedicated people who are trying to understand and explain how do step families work, what are step family problems, how to avoid them, how to solve them. There is a great deal of confusion and misinformation in current step family advice, verbal and printed and pixels. I want to try and offer you some meaningful guidelines. How do you figure out if you're looking at a book, but potentially buying it, or looking at a website saying, should I spend time here? Or if you're going to a lecture by somebody that's supposedly going to tell you, this is what you need to know about step families. How can you tell from the flyers and the advance notice and the dust jacket if this is really worthwhile or not? I want to offer you some tips and some guidelines. <clears throat> in all the information I've reviewed in 31 years, I would say 90% is well intentioned, is partly factual, is usually very superficial, it will not solve the core problems, uh, will validate some of the experience you may be having if you're already in a step family. That's useful to say, oh, I guess I'm not crazy, because you're probably not. But will it help you avoid problems, solve problems? Probably not. Here's why. In my judgment, after obsessing for all these years on step family dynamics, I conclude there are five core reasons that cause most American step families, perhaps all step families, to be high stress, very frustrating, disappointing enterprises that often fail as judged by divorce, re-divorce. There are five core reasons. People who advise you on step families, if they do not mention these five reasons, their advice is superficial and maybe even harmful. The first of five reasons is a major reason for all family dysfunction, not just step families, is inherited psychological wounds from childhood trauma. My whole lesson one in my website is entirely devoted to that. I have a group of videos that will teach you more about psychological wounds, what they are, where they come from, how, do you, how can you tell if you've got them, or if your mate does, and if so, what do you do about it? See Lesson 1 and the Lesson 1 videos. I have found no step family materials in 31 years that focuses on this core problem. None. Zero. Secondly, a major reason for step family and all family dysfunction and trouble 
is adult ignorance. Ancestors and schools do not teach adults what they need to know about psychological wounds, how to spot them and cure them, effective communication and problem solving, there are seven skills. Try and find an author that mentions the seven skills. I bet you can't. Effective three-level grieving and the powerful effect of incomplete grief on relationships and families of all types. The third reason of five that I think many step families are highly stressed and often fail is incomplete grief. Everybody in a step family has got major losses, not just death. How about divorce as a source of many losses? Remarriage itself, we're cohabiting with a new adult partner and bringing everybody together in a new home. Those are sources of major losses. Losses need to be grieved. If people are ignorant of how to grieve well and how to support each other grieving well, people in step families are apt to have incomplete grief. That often is confused with depression. It causes other, quote, mental illnesses, which is a mislabel, um, and may cause physiological problems, like obesity. Someone has observed Every fat cell is an unshed tear. I don't know about you, that resonates with me. So, psychological wounds and ignorance of these topics. The last topic I didn't mention yet is step family realities. Many books that I've read and some articles say, here are some popular step family myths. They list maybe ten at the most. In my obsession, I have come up with 60 common myths. Part of my concluding that is from what over a thousand average men and women in many different step families have taught me. I observe, I listen, I learn, I compare. 60 myths. Most advice only focuses on two or three, like it's a myth that people in step families have to love each other. That's true. How about the myth that if, our, if both our children are grown, yours and mine, from prior marriages, we're not a step family. Oh yes, you are. You certainly are. So, wounds and ignorance of personalities, communication, grieving, and step families are core reasons why step families are stressed and fail. Those two reasons cause a third of five core reasons, which is men and women who are needy and fall in love, perhaps for the second or third time, don't know these things and they make up to three wrong choices. The wrong persons, they commit to for the wrong reasons at the wrong time. Most step family advice does not acknowledge this or explore it in adequate depth. It gives superficial advice on how to have a second wedding. That's fine. It does not guard you against re-divorce. So, uh, three wrong decisions is a third reason. The fourth reason is lack of public support. Um, when you try and find informed support before you're married, if you want remarriage counseling, pre-remarriage counseling, I think it's rare that you can find anybody that is informed of the things I just mentioned and can help you find out where to learn about them. So trying to find a support group that's meaningful and well-led, that knows these three things, uh, wounds, ignorance, wise commitment choices. There are relatively few support groups. They offer support, which is useful, but in terms of providing protection and provide, uh, protection and advice against re-divorce, they probably won't do the job. Um, 
The fifth reason, which is beyond all of our control, is the nation, our nation, pays very little attention to families in general. And there is no supportive legi legislation that helps people make three informed um, marital decisions or parenting decisions. So that's a national problem, something you can't directly do something about it. This is pretty gloomy, isn't it? If you're considering or seeking step family advice, what can you do? There really is helpful advice. Here's the doorway to some. I urge you to uh, view this brief video that I've made, which is somewhat the same as what I just said. It will reinforce what I just said about why most self-help uh, advice does not work long term. See my video? Here's the link. The second thing I recommend is go to my nonprofit website, no ads at all, none. I'm selling information, that's all. Um, see the article whose link I now put on the screen here. It will give you a whole group of step family articles uh, that are based on my 31 years of professional experience and listening to over a thousand people teach me about their real life experience. Go to that web page, look down the page, and you'll see one of the sections is resources. There are articles there on how to evaluate a step family counselor, how to select a step family book or publication, how to evaluate step family advice that will go into much more detail than I've tried to do here. The moral is, do not be overwhelmed by a glitzy, self-assured speaker or author on here's how to make a healthy remarriage or a lasting stepfamily. They're well-intentioned. Some of what they have to say is probably useful, but they probably will not touch on these five core reasons. Educate yourself and all the other adults in your stepfamily, your kids, are depending on you to do that. Thanks for your attention.